Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing, it's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it, yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want and if you really really like it you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. Welcome to episode 40. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to create a more serialized metabox data for our custom post type. In the previous lesson I asked you to do a little bit of homework, I asked you to create all those extra meta boxes to store the author email, the approved checkbox and the future checkbox in our custom section. Well I created those HTML markup in the same testimonial box and if we access our backend inside a testimonial custom post type you will see here that we have this little box called testimonial option where I printed the author name, email, the approved and future checkbox and this is just regular HTML. If you don't know how to do it or you did it differently it's not a problem and just want to show you how to optimize this section in order to avoid to create multiple meta boxes to store a bunch of data all together that belongs to the same custom post type. If we access back our code editor and we go into the testimonial controller inside our base directory, you will notice that here in the add meta boxes method I created just one meta box and I call this meta box testimonial options and then I have just one callback to render the features to render the meta box where I want to print everything. I asked you to create these unique separated meta boxes but I really don't want to do it because that means that every single testimonial custom post type would have to store four extra unique keys like unique meta boxes inside the database, inside the WordPress database and I don't really want to do that, I want to optimize everything and occupy the least amount of slots as possible in my database. So let's store all these extra options like the email, the approved and future checkbox inside this very own and single meta box and this is gonna be really really easy to do. So first the HTML is really simple, I just copy pasted basically what I had in my manager controller in the dashboard area of my custom plugin and then I repurposed those checkboxes with some custom classes just to align it. Once again if you don't want to do it, if it's different no worries, the source code is available on my github repository and you can find the link in the description below the like button. But let's take a look on how to do it. So first what we're doing here, we are getting the post meta and we are checking for this Alica testimonial author key and every time we created this key and we created this custom meta box we always use this Alicat testimonial author, author nonce, author key and if we scroll down to when we save the meta box we're doing the same, we're checking the author, author nonce, we're checking the testimonial author and then the testimonial author key. So that's what we have to change, we have to make these type of key and the nonce associated to this key more generic in order to use it to store multiple different data. So first let's start from uh, the render future box. I want to create a nonce without the underscore author, so I'm gonna remove the author from uh, the unique ID of the nonce, the nonce name itself and the key that I want to store in the database. So let's delete this. Here I want to leave in the label and in the unique name of the input field ID and name the underscore author because this is a unique type of ID that I need to identify and needs to be different from all the other inputs that I'm passing to the form request. So also here I need to have the alicat testimonial underscore email and here let's also write alicat testimonial approved for this unique checkbox, approved and here same thing for the future alicat testimonial future. Perfect, now we have these unique keys, these four unique keys uh, that are getting passed but at the beginning of the render of this box we're just checking for one unique key. So 
what we have to do, we have to collect all these input fields and store them into an associative array inside this unique key. And that's gonna be really, really easy. So let's scroll down to the save meta box method and let's update a bunch of things. First, we don't need to check for the underscore author not because we changed the name. So let's remove these underscore author when we're checking for the nonce and we're checking for the nonce ID is just alicat testimonial. Here is perfect. Then here we want to update the post meta, so storing our database without the author as well, because we're tapping just the regular key. This is correct. We need to keep it like this, but we need to edit something. So here we're storing in our database the data inside this unique key. This data, I don't want it to be just a simple text with the author name. I wanted to include the full list of all the unique input fields that I want to save. So my featured, my approved, and my email input field. So let's convert these into an associative array by opening these as an array. And let's go on another line so it's going to be easier to write. And here we can create a key for this array called name because we're storing the name. And of course here we don't need to write once again alicad underscore testimonial author blah blah blah. We can keep it really really simple because this is a, an associative array. It's an array inside our own custom variable. So it's not going to interfere with any other type of unique key inside the WordPress database. So we can use really simple names. We don't need to use a prefix or a postfix to avoid issues. Then the second an attribute is the email attribute that I want to save. And also in this case, we're getting a text field. So let's sanitize the text field. But here we want to check the post request for the Alica testimonial email that is identical to the ID and name of this input field, the Alica testimonial email. Perfect. Let's do exactly the same for the approved checkbox. But in this case, the checkbox is not a text field, so we don't have to sanitize it, but we need to check if the checkbox is part of the post request. And if it's part of the post request, we want to store it with a Boolean, so with one or zero. So let's say that if the post request exists with a short hand if statement, so if Alicat testimonial approved question mark exists, so it's part of the post request, we can return one, otherwise we can return zero. And you could also do something like that. You could also do double question mark. That means that if this is true, if this is part of the post request, use the value that this post request has and store it inside the approve. Otherwise use the zero. You just with this double question mark, you avoid to specify the through the variation, but it's always better to be sure and specify manually specify which type of data we want to store in our database because a user could potentially update the value that we're passing with this post request with something malicious and we don't want to store whatever thing the user can write in the HTML in our database, it's always better to manually set what we want to store. And we can do exactly the same for the future. So let's select both and future it is stored like this. That's perfect. Now we have these data that it's an array and we're storing inside our Alicat testimonial key. So if we scroll back up now, this name doesn't make sense because we're not getting just the name, but we're getting the full list of data. With the full list of data now, we can generate unique variables like the name and the email variable and then approved and check that we can check later to detect if that unique key of our Alicat testimonial key array exists, we can return the value. Otherwise, we return empty. Um, we need to do that because we cannot simply do something like this data open and close the square brackets and specify the key because if the user never saved these, this key doesn't actually exist. So we cannot assume that by default this key exists for every testimonial custom post type. We need to check it first. So let's go back to the name and let's specify that the name it's equal to an inline if statement called is set if the data key name is set, then we can return it. Otherwise, with a column, we can return empty, but at least this variable is declared even if it's empty and we're safe, we're not going to have a PHP error. 
same thing we can do for uh, the email, same thing we can do for the approved, but instead of returning empty, we want to return false, and same thing we want to do for futured. And also in this case, because this is a checkbox, we want to return a boolean, so false. Perfect, now we have already in my HTML code, we have the name and the email that are automatically are getting printed and escaping the attribute here. We need to customize the approve and the future checkbox. And to do that, it's really, really simple. We already did something similar in our manager callback and also in the custom post type manager generator. So here, right after the value, we can delete the class because we don't need any class here. We can open and close the PHP tags and echo an inline if statement, an inline condition. So echo if the approved is set to through, so it's not zero, it's not false, but it's one or through, we can return the checked attribute, otherwise we can return nothing, simple empty. We can copy this and paste it right here for the future, but of course replacing this variable with the proper variable name future. Let's save it. And that's it. Let's go back in our backend. And our testimonial option is completely empty. So let me show you a little bug. If we try to update this with these all these options completely empty, we're gonna have a PHP error because also in this case, we're trying to tap an index that doesn't really exist. In our case, the approved, the featured, and the PHP error is saying that this error is happening in the testimonial controller on line 120. So if we access line 120, it's where we are getting this stuff. And uh, this error happens because the checkbox doesn't pass an empty value if it's not checked. We don't have this error in the email or name because those are input fields. So the value is there, the form is there and, getting, and it's getting past an empty value. But for the checkbox, uh, this doesn't exist. So we need to also in this case, specify if this key is set. And if this set, we can return one, otherwise zero. So if we save, we go back, we refresh, we update, there you go. Now the update process doesn't trigger any error, even if the entire testimonial options is empty. But now if we try to save it, so let's say the author is Alex, this is Alex at test.com and this testimonial is approved, but it's not future, let's update. There you go. The page refreshed and these options is saved. So if I go back and I open again, our options are saved. So if I say that this comment is also featured, update, Look at that, everything is saved properly and we have everything stored in the database in one single meta option. Not in four, but it's just one single meta option that it's an array. And this is fantastic because that means that whenever we need to create a custom meta option or a custom meta box for a custom post type or a page or the regular post, even if we have 20 different options, we're not gonna have 20 different slots in our database, 20 different rows per post in our database. Everything is just one single meta option serialized inside the database. We're gonna save space, it's gonna be more performant for the future, and it's gonna be way easier to scale and manage when we export the database. So that's fantastic. Well, that's pretty much it for today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.